real pleasure uh, to introduce this uh, new team for you. Uh, new team because we are working with the, uh, the guys that work with the congenital heart disease. As you know, we have a strong uh, congenital heart program here at Dante Pazanese. Just beside me here in my right, we have uh, Simone Pedra, uh, who is a good friend of mine. And she's the chief of this whole department. And we perform about uh, 400 uh, congenital surgeries, open heart surgeries a year. And I have Carlos Pedra in my left, distal left over there, uh, who is the chief for interventional congenital heart disease. So you see, we are in family here, not by heart, but also by um, names too. Simone Pedra and Carlos Pedra. And Carlos Pedra is responsible for the cat lab. And we do about 500, between 500 and 600 procedures a year in our lab. And also we have Dimitri Siqueira, just beside you know, uh, the, the chief for structural heart disease in our uh, cat lab. And also a good friend of us, Marcelo Ribeiro, who works in the congenital heart disease uh, in the cat lab. So we have a very um, strong team to discuss this very special case. We are supported by the excellent team of nurse, as you know, Fernanda uh, who, is, uh, who is here just in front of you, in front of the camera here. Fernanda, if you show, we have the team of ECHO, uh, that's uh, Daniel, and uh, also the anesthesiology and Walter. So this is the whole team. And I think without wasting any time, we should present the case. Carlos, please. Let me have the slides. Uh, next one. Okay. Uh, so this is a 64-year-old female lady weighing uh, 65 kilos. Uh, she's not frail, uh, she's totally independent. And uh, her symptoms nowadays, uh, she complains of easy fatigue. In fact, uh, she was born uh, with a congenital Epstein anomaly. And there was also a small ASD. Uh, 11 years ago in 2012, uh, she underwent surgical plasty which wasn't su successful. Uh, one week later, uh, this was performed in, at another hospital. He had tricuspid valve replacement with a 31 millimeters bioprosthesis. We didn't know uh, which was. In fact, it seems that it's a lab core and she also had her, her, her ASD closure. She's very low risk for operation. Uh, next one. So Carlos, just uh, let me ask you. So when we talk about congenital heart disease, we thought that we would see a, like, just a small <laughs> baby. No, you know, still have a, we have a lady with 64 years old. Yeah, in yeah. fact, that's a good question because <laughs> the population of adults with congenital heart disease <laughs> nowadays is yeah. larger than, than kids. Yeah. So very, uh, and we have a very, very impressive. Strong, yeah, we have very strong adult <laughs> congenital heart disease yeah. program as well. So now this lady has a, a, a mixed lesion in the tricuspid uh, bioprosthesis. Uh, she's on aspirin, statins, and malapril. On physical examination, uh, she had jugular distension. Her liver was two to three centimeters below the costal margin. And she also has the typical regurgitation murmur in the tricuspid position. With regards to TTE, turns thoracic, she has a huge right atrium. Uh, this is the area. Uh, her uh, septum is intact, no SD. A little bit of RV dysfunction, a calcified bioprosthetic valve with severe TR and a mean diastolic gradient of seven. Her estimated RV systolic pressure uh, was 28. So next slide, we're gonna see some more uh, pictures. This is the TE. You can see the Doppler pattern uh, near the, the atrium in the inferior vena cava with no vari variation during respiration. Um, next one. Yeah, very good. So you can see uh, how big the right atrium is, yeah. right? Uh, Actually being larger than the heart. Larger than the heart. <laughs> yes, it's uh, <laughs> because of its compliance, <laughs> the right atrium become really, really big. Mm -hmm. The septum is not moving well. We're gonna see some more pictures with TE mm -hmm. uh, here. Um, you can see how 
uh, immobile uh, uh, one leaflet is uh, near the septum, and you can have an appreciation of the anatomy using 3D TT. Next one. So she underwent uh, a CT scan as well. I think Dimitri can make some comments. Sure, sure. So this is part of our uh, planning here. Mm -hmm. CT evaluation is very important on this patient uh, mm -hmm. that uh, has indication for valve involved procedures. Like we and, do for mitral for aortic. Yes, it's the same. And particularly on this patient, like like uh, Carlos just said, this patient she doesn't have a surgical report. Mm -hmm. So we don't know the model or the so size- So she was not operated here. No. Of the valve okay. that was implanted. Two for our surgeon, because they tried a, uh, <laughs> a um, plastic of yeah, the valve. Yeah, it didn't work. They didn't work. It yeah. wasn't successful. Okay. And it didn't... seems to be a lobby core. And we got the diameters here, the two internal diameters, 27 mm -hmm. per 28. So maybe she has a 31. Yeah, uh, lobby core. Wow. And then we simulate uh, the. No, implant. if you would, let me ask you, okay. just for the audience, if we don't have a surgical report, should we contraindicate a valve involved procedure or we can calculate by TOMO? Oh, so it's going to be more, in other words, it's going to be more precise when you have the surgical uh, report. I think that we need both, uh -huh. but when you don't have the surgical report, CT uh, uh, can replace it. Yes. Oh, that's a very important sure. point. Okay. So we simulate the implantation of um, a balloon expandable valve in the tricuspid position. Uh, we simulate two sizes, 29 and 30.5 millimeters. Um, as part of our evaluation, we also look for some tortuosity. Uh, particularly in tricuspid patients, uh, the inferior vena cava related to the tricuspid annulus. And this, this is the suggested uh, implant view that we're going to use for uh, tricuspid valve involved, aerial 7, caldo 1. Dimitri, when we do valve inv mitral valve involved, we are so concerned about the um, left. Uh, um, uh, event, event obstruction. obstruction. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you concern about the right? I don't the think same? that is an Do you think issue about, of, maybe you can a good question. have a great experience with this? We've never had because of the uh, Krista, right? Mm -hmm. There is separation between the RVOT okay. and tricuspid valve. So, the anatomy so, yeah, can answer totally this question. Different. The anatomy. So, it's not a It's completely different from the left anatomy from the right anatomy. Yeah, because uh, so we've, we've had uh, transient mm -hmm. uh, heart heart block in okay. one case. Okay. She came back after a week. Uh -huh. I think that's one of the problems uh, the, uh, related uh -huh. to this procedure. So, so Fausto, to, to summarize, 64-year-old uh -huh. um, lady with previous uh, tricuspid valve replacement, mm -hmm. twice, right? Yeah. Well, uh, now one. she's very symptomatic mm -hmm. with signs of uh, right heart failure. And with a bioprosthesis dysfunction, mostly uh, regurgitation. Mm -hmm. And after heart team discussion, uh, we felt that uh, transcatheter mitral uh, tricuspid valve involved uh, would be a better option okay. for this patient. Yeah. So since we have most uh, our adult cardiology, maybe I should ask Simone <laughs> and about the Epstein anomaly. So is that common to have several surgeries in, uh, during the lifetime? And uh, when you do the diagnosis in, in, the, in, in children, yes. and how, how can you manage it, uh, so this? So let me say a little bit about- Can you have Epstein. the camera to Simone, please? Yeah. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. The Epstein anomaly can present in two different settings. Uh, the most uh, severe presentation is pedo and neonatal presentation with pulmonary atresia, functional or anatomical. And this is a very uh, difficult disease to deal with. And uh, there is a very high mortality in this setting. And then there is the presentation that occurs during life after the neonatal period. And usually some of the patients are completely asymptomatic during infancy. And the main thing, uh, there are two types of presentation. One is cyanosis. If they have an ASD, they have 
uh, right to, le to left shunt at the atrial septum, and they can, can get uh, polycythemic and, and they are at high risk for uh, embolic events. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other presentation is with intact septum and they have heart failure and the left, the right atrium is very dilated with severe uh, TR and all the heart, uh, bright heart um, failure presentation. Um, so in the past, we used to have lots of surgeries in these patients. Um, the, the surgical repair was very uh, frustrating in the, in the past. And since Dr. Da Silva, uh, with his cone procedure, started with this technique, and he has uh, treated people from everywhere in the world, uh, the prognosis for this, this disease improved a lot. Um, so, so it's a Brazilian uh, technique. Yeah, Brazilian yes, a Brazilian cardiac surgeon yeah, technique. Dr. Pedro da Silva was the one, and he really changed the the natural history of this disease. In the past, people like her would, would be candidate for transplant. Mm -hmm. And um, now with this cone procedure, things has changed. But this is the typical presentation of uh, a, a lady um, with um, severe Epstein anomaly that had surgery a few years ago. The, plas uh, the plasty was not successful and she needed a prosthesis. And as everybody knows, the uh, right position, the uh, prosthesis in the in tricuspid position is a big deal. Uh, it doesn't last much. And this is the typical history that we see. A dysfunction with severe RV dilation. Can you have the echo pictures, echo pictures, and on uh, screen? And, and why you have go the echo pictures? Maybe you can tell uh, yeah. our your plans uh, for today, uh, yeah, Carlos. It, yeah, in fact, uh, I, I want Simone to show the echo pictures because we found some uh, new data here, okay. which yeah, is interesting. Interesting. So these pictures we're taking uh, now today, and you see how big is the right atrium, and you see how cal calcified is the prosthesis. There is no uh, good movement of the leaflets. Mm. They are calcified. And you see that the function of the right ventricle, right ventricle is not good, especially the septum. It bulges to the left side. And Danny, can you change, please, the next one? Mm. Uh, this is a zoom of the same uh, view. Next one. And we can see here how uh, stenotic is the, the prosthesis. And we see a big uh, regurgitation. Of course, the atrium is so big that it seems smaller. You have stenosis it. and regurgitation. Yes. It's it's double, double dysfunction. Double, double dysfunction, okay. exactly. Next. Um, the next. next one, please. And here we have the gradient. She's anesthetized and she has six millimeters mean gradient. And uh, the next one shows the RV pressure is low, usually low because it doesn't generate uh, good pressure uh, forward. Next one. And here a zoom showing the dysfunction. The next one, we, ha we have some 3D pictures that Danny uh, made it, and we see that there is only one leaflet moving well, which is the anterior. The other ones are uh, are stopped, mm -hmm. and that's the the reason of the prosthesis dysfunction. Next, I think we can move to the RV T the TE the any please, um, where we see a very interesting. Um, uh, this is the right atrium. See how big it is. Mm -hmm. And the next one, Danny, please. Uh, we can see there is still leaflet mm -hmm. uh, left. I think the next one left. So the prosthesis uh, was one. put. Uh, and uh, you can change, please. This one. No, no. Yeah, this one. This is Back. perfect. And you see here, the valve is still there. Yes. So, of course, this um, this this plasty was not uh, successful. And she uh, end up with a, a, a prosthesis. And then this is the, the natural history of this, this situation now with a dysfunction. OK. So Carlos, yeah. what are your plans for today? Can yeah, well, we the discussed uh, within what the have you, how, What have you done so far? Yeah, well, um, first of all, we have discussed. We are planning to, it's a valve involved procedure. Mm -hmm. So uh, the difficulty here, the trick is that this lab core valve 
is translucent. Yeah. It doesn't show we well have the, on the fluoroscopy. large screen, please, in, yeah. the, in the lab, we just to Carl. We call this type of valve as ghost valve. Ghost valve. Yeah. So okay. this is a ghost valve. Can okay. we have the, the fluoroscopy, please? Not the echo. Fluoroscopy. Okay, thank you. So as you, you, you see here, false of cars, there, there are the sternal wires. Can, can, you, can you see the prosthesis here? Yeah, behind oh, yeah. the sternal it's wires. Uh, you can, can see the ring. Yeah. Uh, very, uh, very difficult. And you can see some calcification uh, uh, at the, the, the posts. Yes. Uh, because of the na native tricuspid valve tissue, it's important when you enter the right ventricle uh -huh. from the RA, there's a trick here. I'm, I'm, I am advancing a wire, okay. which, uh, which has a curve here, uh -huh. and, and it crosses okay. through the true defect mm -hmm. without engaging in any core the core. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Otherwise it's difficult to advance mm -hmm. the, the wire. And uh, we decided, uh, mm -hmm. next one, uh, this one, and we did, um, RV angel, mm -hmm. you can see how weird the appearance of the right ventricle is. And this is typical wow. of Epstein. Mm -hmm. And and the wall of the Epstein That's a great disease picture. is very thin. Wow. So the, uh, Dmitri and I discussed where to park the wire. Yeah. Uh, we could have parked the wire mm -hmm. at the apex of the right mm -hmm. ventricle, mm -hmm. but I think uh, it's more dangerous. Mm -hmm. And because of the, uh, the, the prosthesis is sort of oriented towards the right ventricular outflow tract. So we decided to park the wire in the right PA. Wow. And we're gonna do so that. So went up to here. Oh, yeah, live. So cap. we left the catheter. Okay. The catheter the is there, yes. pigtail. And we're gonna, um, we're gonna put the, the wire. It's a Lundquist wire. Can you describe okay, good. Uh, Jimmy? You go to the wedge. Yeah, so, sometimes we need to use a, a deflectable catheter mm -hmm. to cross the, the tricuspid mm -hmm. valve. But in this case, in fact, it was very So the case you have done, you you have used the wire in the pulmonary artery? No, no. no. Both. We've done both. 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 Okay. Yeah. So do you have any special uh, consideration because of the trabeculates that you see in the le uh, right ventricle? Uh, that's different yeah, from the left? In this case, mm -hmm. because of Epstein anomaly and the characteristics of the right ventricle, mm -hmm. so trabeculated and a small ventricle. So do you need the echo right I now with the uh, I think the echo will uh, help you, us. Can you just uh, remove uh, the can, uh, yeah. TE just to, to see better or not? No. No, I think the echo will help to place the the, the pulses, yeah in a good position. Okay, so you always do with the T echo. Yeah, of course this patient is mm. under general anesthesia. It's going to go to the right. A gente pode fazer pegar um guia de troca. It's not going to see. Uh, Dimitri, while uh, Carlos is working there, can, yeah. can you make Dá any um comments troca about, about the pacemaker? Uh, replacement usually have a permanent pacemaker from your yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it possible to perform? JR5 uh, they oh, already the, have a pacemaker. Uh, you, you should balance the risk of uh, damage the, um, the, the leads uh, mm -hmm. during, for example, suspect mm -hmm. valve involved for surgery, mm -hmm. because we are going to use a balloon expandable uh, valve. I think that for dedicated tricuspid mm -hmm. valves that are under investigation, mm -hmm. uh, they are self expandable. So this might not be a problem. But when we use a, a balloon expandable mm -hmm. valve, particularly mm -hmm. when we oversize, so it may, maybe there's a risk of damage the lead. Oh, uh, I see. So I lost the wire position, the catheter position, as expected, because the Lundquist wire mm -hmm. is so rigid. So it made my catheter come back. So you're so, going to place again? Yeah, uh, yeah. We're going to. Sometimes this is the hardest part to, no, no. of the procedure. So we are doing life. It's, it's normal. Yeah, no problems. No, Nicole. 
You can also so use the juggler back. for oh. this kind of procedure. Or can we also use juggler? Yeah, yeah, we have done some some cases. But juggler. Yeah, but is more anatomic, or it's easier uh, in terms of logistics and ergonomics. Mm -hmm. It's more. I think it's more difficult. You are at the head of the patient, mm -hmm. uh, near to the X-ray tube. So I see. Now we bring in a. This is a JR uh, catheter. This one. JR. Yes. And very, very distal. Okay. Punch. We use a. So in the past, we did that when we were uh, doing a diagnosis for mitral stenosis. Yeah. So I have not done this so far for a long time. <laughs> uh, bring a catheter in the wedges. So we are planning to use a. Uh, a valve which is called my valve. Now we are doing this in patients with diastolic dysfunction and with a heart failure is to preserve the EF. We are doing this in our cat lab in diagnosed, doing exercise and uh, measure the wedge pressure. And now Carlos is bringing the uh, stiff wire. Is that correct, Carlos? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any difficulty just to yeah. advance it? Yeah, we're having some problems here. That's good. I, I think we're in a good okay. position right now. Huh? So we are yeah. bringing back the JR now. Yeah. In order to advance the system. Okay. This we're going to use a uh, 30.5 valve. Remember so, that the inner diameter was 28. All the implantation have you done is without a predilatation or you did any predilatation? No, generally you don't need. If, if you have a good wire position and... So if, if you have a only uh, stenosis with a calcified valve, do you think it would be a good idea to predilate or not? I don't think so. No. No, I think, uh, I think the calcium uh, works as a matrix. Okay. To pop now, the uh, valve. Can you so, bring the, the camera to the yeah, I think the hand? camera over are you there? The, yeah. What kind so, of valve you're gonna use here? It's my valve, mm -hmm. the name of the uh, the valve. Uh it's um bovine pericardium mm -hmm. leaflets, and uh the mesh, the metal mesh is uh nickel chromium. Okay, perfect. Okay, so are you so bringing this is the, the sheet? The, yeah, the, the introducers set. Okay, is yeah, a four, 14? This is a 14. No, okay. Sika, Sika. This is a 14 sheet. This is a 14, and we're going to use the dilator mm -hmm. to make it. So, Marcelo bigger. is holding the wire, yeah. and Carlos is bringing the yeah. introducer. It's quite easily. So, you were in the vein. Yeah. And first, we, we, put, uh, we put a proglide. We, we pre closed the, uh, the yes. puncture here. So we okay. try to use only one proglide too. Only one. Only yeah. one. In the vein. So this is the dilator. Mm -hmm. You can use the 14 sheath with the smaller smaller valves. Okay, perfect. Right, but because we are doing okay. uh, the case with a 30.5, so you have to dilate the sheath up to 18 French. Okay. So, so what valve did you have prepared, uh, Karina? 30. Ah. Okay, so this is a 30.5, and Carlos, we're going to make comments, or maybe Dimitri after this. Okay. So now you're bringing the introducer and keeping the wire. Be careful. Yes. Uh, Marcelo is doing this, and Carlos is holding yeah. uh, the introducer over there. There's okay, great. Some brute. Brutal force here needed. <laughs> okay, yes. Sometimes so now, now we are ready for the valve. So it's very important now to check the orientation uh, of the valve um, because it's a, it's a different orientation that we used to do with Taver. Okay, so, can you bring the camera very close to Dimitri's hands, please? So the skirt is here at the proximal part. Very close. Balloon. Can you give a zoom, please, in the hands? Here. And Dimitris, right here, a little bit uh, behind this. Not, not, not mine. 
And as a kid, this, okay. Go to Dimitri is right here again. The hands, from above. okay. Yeah. Good now. So, can you explain again, please? At the distal position in the balloon, uh huh. And then we're gonna check the volume, we're gonna implant this valve with I a 2 cc more mm -hmm. in, the, in the inflator. And we're going to use the delivery system with the logo upside down, just to respect the anatomy. So do you use a Gilles uh, catheter to, uh, to cross the valve? Yes, sometimes it's necessary, mm -hmm. uh, but we can see that uh, Carlos... Just, you, you, Carlos will feel that. Yeah. Okay. Now Carlos is... Uh, I'm holding the, the wire. wire. Yeah. Hold, uh, Marcelo is holding the wire oh, and sure. Carlos is pulling the valve. Uh, yes. Okay, can you uh, bring the so screen? Have, Go ahead. Can you bring the uh, screen? Uh, I mean, the intensifier a little bit proximal, please, Carlos, just to see the valve going up. Push un pochino de mi. Yes. Okay, Pero Marcelo is holding the wire. Agora segura. Okay, the valve is coming now. I'm going to do this under Cine so that you can see better. Let's see if you can go across. Yeah, okay, almost there. Yeah. Okay, it was easily. easily. Great, great. You see how easy Good it, job. it went. Yes. So let's see um, positioning. Let's make the screen bigger. Because our aim here, Fausto, is to, to place the valve just 10 to 20% atrial. Is there any tips and tricks and when you have some angulations? Because I think it's very common in the left ventricle and tricuspid to have an angle, different angulation to get across, uh, Carlos? Oh, I think uh, this case was easy. Sometimes- mm. No, this it, case it, is easy, yeah. but I'm talking about the different angulations. What do you do? Just uh, to, tips and tricks for well, uh, when I start doing this procedure. Never had problems. For sometimes if you have problems coming from below, mm -hmm. Uh, coming from the IJ is a good idea as yes. well. Can you That's get what the me about? said. So uh, to change a stiffer wire or something yeah, like this, this? The wire position is very, very, very important. I think so, when you advance any device to the heart, you need to be very coaxial. That's, I think I, it's important. I that was very coaxial. So uh, could you see the, the valve? It's too much to the Try Can you to, take a look on echo to see? Yes. To oh. see the position uh, in long axis. Yeah. Let's try to make the valve a little bit coaxial. Maybe if, Maybe if we push the bit. wire. No, uh, here. Here. Yeah, and the other yeah. trick here, I'm not I'm not going, mm -hmm. I'm going, I'm pushing the wire. Okay. To make the valve become more or horizontal, you see, it's yes. better. The, you agree? Yeah, I think it's too ventricular. Yeah, I think, yes. You have only one third in the atrial and two, more than two thirds in the, there. the right ventricle. I think it's more ventricular. There. Okay, let's, Let, let's, let's look to the posts, the calcified posts. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the, it's too ventricular, right? Yeah. É que isso aqui quer diminuir na hora que você insufla, uhum. dá para... Entendeu? Dimitri, Aí. Uh, can you, can you make any comments, Dimitri, about the position, compare this position let's, with let's, the mitral let's position? Check again. Let's check again before okay. we I think the we're valve. Good. Okay. So uh, we are going to do a very, very slow inflation uh, because Carlos can, can make some adjustments. Uh, during the deployment, okay, and uh, because we we are in the right chamber, we don't need to pace to so, implant the valve. So the pacing use is different from other mitro or aorta. It's not mandatory to to uh, pace okay to a tricuspid valve. Okay, okay. but you need to so to be so slow and car is paying attention on this. Okay, so you are you're almost uh, in the mid portion. Sure. Okay, sure. Now inflating. I'm trying to so mais um pouco. Pode, yeah. Pode que ela vai ficar boa. So it's low. Mais um pouquinho. Okay, it's still in the mid portion. The inflation is good. It's yes. open. Um it's a little bit more in the left. I would say six percent in the vent. All the way down. Okay. All the way up. All the way up. Wow. Yes. 
I got you now. Okay. So you have about 70% in the right ventricle and 30% in the atrial. Yeah. <laughs> That's a... And I like, we can see the waist uh -huh. and some flaring towards the ventricular aspect. And again, a little bit of flaring so, up to the, to the atrium. Uh, I think the, the, the valve, the position looks perfect. Okay. We're going to see on echo. Okay, good. Let me ask you one question. I think it's important for the, uh, the audience. So yeah. yeah, we're going to bring him back the balloon yeah. now. Great. And Carlos, when you start inflating, we're about 50 to 50 in the left and the right ventricle and the right atrial. The thing is, the, because... the, valve, the valve move a little bit ahead to the no. right ventricle. So you, you finish with 30% in the atrial and 7%. Yeah, we were planning that. Objective? Yeah, we are planning that because uh, it's not totally horizontal, right? Yes, so you have yes, to I saw that. come with more towards the atrium. Uh, and then when you uh, adjust, when it becomes horizontal. There is some inclination. Yeah, I, I could yeah. see that. Let's see on echo now. So, Dimitri, could you make any comments while uh, Simone is uh, looking at the echo? echo big on the comparing screen? mitral and tricuspid because the, the people now, I think they have much more experience with the mitral. We don't Anything see the echo. About the, the Guys, comparison please. Between echo. Mitral. Echo, on echo, screen. echo on the screen, please. The major challenge uh, yeah. during mitral procedures is yeah. the transeptal puncture. Uh -huh. you, you need to be at the right point. I remember that the first the case we did. But when you were there, uh -huh. I think it's, okay. it's a straightforward procedure. So let's hear Simone, uh, what is she's finding with the, now Simone, the words is yours, please. Okay, so we see here, it's hard to see the leaflets because we have a lot of uh, shadow uh, coming from the heart, uh, but we can see um, part of the, let me get the, here, uh, the stand here, so this is part of the valve, the device, and here the other one. And we look uh, for the flow across it. Um, we see there is no more um, acceleration to the inflow, and no. And there is a very mild regurg here. Very, uh, I'm going very down here. Maybe a little bit of leak, but very, very, very small. And do you think that the gastric view could help you? Yeah, I'm trying. I, I was doing that before. I, I'm going to move because when we, we change the position here, we see unfas. You see the ring of the valve and we see the stent here. But it's hard to look at the, the leaflets. But one thing that we can do is to move to change to the transthoracic echo, uh, which is... Uh, possibility here okay but there is no significant regurgitation no no when i first, uh, first yeah. saw I, I was under the impression there was a bit of paravalvular leak but i'm not sure yes i was uh, looking at it near the septum yeah exactly yeah when, there's a little bit but yeah. very very small on long axis not yeah. fast yeah. you could see maybe a little bit of paravalvular leak maybe so uh, you're saying this. How do you make your decision to do a post dilatation? I know well, you're looking see. at this. Yeah, let, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, the the big decision now. Yeah, because uh, we 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 have some more volume mm -hmm. on the syringe mm -hmm. in the syringe, no. and we can post dilate using all yeah with the all the way up with yeah. the same balloon. Same, so, same. So Simone is, is calling our attention yeah, for some so findings. I think there's a little bit of leak here. You see. It's very posterior and close to the septum, as you see. Yeah. So, Simone, we 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 get a, a wire there. So, could be the wire. Um, I, if that's a good question. Uh, yeah, it's a very oh, good no. question, but it doesn't look central. No. It does look uh, yeah. peripheral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't I think don't it's better. It's better. But so I it's can't. Central or uh, paravalvular, right? I'm taking the TTE probe now. Okay. okay? Uh, Dimitri, because, because on fluoroscopy, fluoroscopy, let's advance while well, she does that. The valve looks uh, well look, expanded yes. in the right position, the yeah. 10% atrial, uh -huh. yeah. and it assumes a, a conical shape. Yeah, yeah I totally agree. The, the, the so, ventricle. what is the risk of a post dilatation? It's important to mention it because you know you make a balance to post dilate or not to, to dilate. So, what is yeah. the risk? I don't think that if, 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 if also in the mitral, we are scared about a left ventricle obstruction. 
Uh, here we don't have this risk. Yeah. Oh, and if it's a tiny risk, for, so I would leave it alone because okay. we are on the right side. Okay. All right. So low pressure system. Uh -huh. If it's a very tiny leak, even paravalvular. Even the the, I, 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 I the pressure is low. Yeah. So you already have a. A, a, a large a, right yeah. ratio, so I, that's an important considerations. Yeah, I didn't mention, Fausto, so I didn't mention at the beginning my fault. Yeah, uh, we had about four millimeter gradient. We have 10, uh -huh. 11 in the uh -huh. RA, the uh -huh. mean pressure, and the end diastolic pressure of the right ventricle was about seven. Oh, I see. So four gradient, four millimeter. So the, 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 the RA is already huge. It's a compliant yeah. chamber. So it's not causing you know, a pressure uh, uh, burden to the What, what to we the usually agent. do during tower procedures mm -hmm. is to exchange the stiff wire for a pigtail and ju just to evaluate uh, the echo. Yeah. And then if needed, we can place a wire again. Uh, okay. gonna do that, huh? So can you bring, bring it back? Yeah. Okay, Simone, okay. What do you think? Yeah. So I think that um, uh, the position is very good, as you see here. So it's mainly in the ventricle, and this is um, the the tiny regurg uh, related, probably related to the guide guide wire, and there is no evident um, leak paravalvularly, as you see, no regurgitation. So. Looks perfect. Very so good. what is your advice to Carlos Simone? Should we post that later or not? No. How, how do you classify this uh, <laughs> kind of regurgitation? If you <laughs> divide in one, two, three, or four? No, I think he, the position is perfect and I wouldn't do anything else. I would stop here. Yeah, okay. The regurgitation is less than one. That's a, I totally agree with you. It's a trap. I will take uh, the wire uh, out uh, first okay. and, let, and we're going to go from there okay. and take okay, the good. last look. Dimitri, uh, would you say that lip left thrombosis is more um, likely in tricuspid than in mitral position? That's, that's a tough question, Fausto, because uh, we know that in the right because chamber, the pressure is lower. Than, and yeah. sometimes we face some patients uh, coming back with mm. a leaflet thrombosis in uh, tricuspid. Yeah, in tricuspid. So that's thinking, why we, we're going to put this patient on anticoagulation. I say, what is your regimen that you choose? Um, anticoagulation for this patient? Maybe warfarin. Warfarin? Uh, there's no data about using uh, direct anticoagulants. Uh -huh. um, but we're going to see. Uh -huh. that there's no da data out bomba. there yet. So, uh, Carlos, do you expect the heart failure of for this patient is going to improve uh, um, rapidly or do you think it's going to take time? How do you follow this patient, Carlos? Usually, usually they they like at the end of huh? the procedure, when they wake uh -huh. up, they feel better. They say yeah. they, they breathe yes. better. It's amazing, but it's very subjective. Right congestion is- uh, Now we, we're gonna have to wait at least six months for some remodeling, maybe of the right ventricle. And uh, we know that the bio uh, 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 valve is implanted in the tricuspid position in terms of durability. Yes, that's they, on my next question. Yeah, they, sorry. <laughs> no, no, they, that's they, great. They, they don't last that long. Yeah, in tricuspid. So they the get tricuspid calcified more yeah. easily. More easily. than in the left system? More in the left. So that's more very important. So you have uh, failure by the with the procedure yeah. in the tricuspid, what, the higher more? incidence yeah. than in, in the left. The lifespan based yeah. on uh, actorial uh, curves uh, is about five to 10 years. So you, and what is the follow-up, the longest follow-up you have for these uh, percutaneous? Uh, now we started this about like five years yeah. ago. Yeah. Three to five years. Yeah, they're doing fine. We have a couple, this is not a very frequent procedure. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have seven or eight patients and they are all doing great okay. on, on anticoagulation. So hopefully in the future, we can use uh, this procedure for patients with heart failure. Yeah. And yeah. the good so it's yeah. not abstinent. Uh, okay, we're gonna do so, an so angel here. We have one more minute left. Okay, Vai? I'm gonna move to the Vai? other lab Vai? and then finish the other case. Is there any time? Yeah. Uh, okay, no, great. we have a cutoff. At, um, at I, I'm gonna no? take the, the this. Maybe you can just move there. And, and let's see now. Let's see an echo. If there is, that's the final picture we're okay. gonna take. Okay, great. 
Great result. Yeah, I don't think there is significant so, PR. Okay. I think we are done. So can you have the, all the camera? Okay, great. Yeah, so, echo. Thank you very much, Guy. Congrats to you. It was a beautiful case. A very nice demonstration. You just changed in a tricuspid valve in, in <laughs> less than 40 minutes. That's unbelievable. Great. Go. Well, see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you I'm for the opportunity. I'm going to move to the other bye lab bye. if you have time. If you not have time...